Hey there, folks. So uh, recently I did a stream on the new Funny Playing IPS kit. Uh, I did a build in this Game Boy right here. I think it turned out pretty decent, but it was also only a beta, um, or I guess a, a pre-release kit, so I couldn't test out all the features. Uh, well, I got the final one in. Uh, so let's go ahead and check it out here. Uh, this is going to be tonight's donor. I already went through this thing with a uh, fine tooth comb and refurbished anything that needed refurbishing. And so it's fully working, uh, tested beforehand, should be good to go to use for this mod. Um, highly recommend not just buying a Game Boy and then throwing mods at it, you know, make sure it actually works first. Uh, but anyway, more on that in a moment. Uh, this is how the kit comes. Um, oh, I forgot to turn on all my lighting. Um, so this is direct from Funny Playing. Uh, they use these cases here, I guess, as a, um, you know, it's a hard plastic to try and protect the stuff in shipping. Uh, unfortunately, one of the latches broke off on mine in transit, but it served its purpose because my kit arrived to me fully intact. Uh, so here's what you get. You get the laminated screen assembly, same as I showed off last time. Um, but you also get this little baggie with the kit and three wires. And a piece of foam uh, that I noticed was missing from my pre-release kit. Uh, now, the sticker here does say please test this kit for, before installation, and we will do that. Uh, but just as a heads up, I did already test this kit, and it does already seem to work. Um, I was troubleshooting something and needed a uh, needed a kit, so I grabbed the first one on my desk, and that happened to be that. Uh, anyway, the shell we're going to be using is one of these uh, white laminated ready kit uh, housings uh, with the final production bracket, not the same, not the pre-production bracket that I had been using. Uh, I don't know if this shell is any different than the previous shells that Funny Playing has sent me. I'm pretty sure it's not, uh, but just in case it is, we'll go ahead and use the new one anyway. Uh, so let's, let's get on with it. So we're going to be using a 40 pin GBA for the install today. Uh, for no particular reason other than it was at the top of the pile. Um, and because I already know this one should be working perfectly fine. On account of me having to just perform open heart surgery on it. Uh, but also the, the 40 pin ribbon is a little bit easier to work with. Because you don't have to do any weird folds with it. So, uh, eh. The 32 pin one works just fine, I just, I don't know. Like I said, top of the pile. That was the biggest factor. So we will go ahead and pull this apart. I need to go grab my test game, unless that's right here. Oh, it is right here, okay. How can you? We'll go ahead and get that plugged in. Pull all this stuff off. And right now, uh, because I usually do a bunch of power usage tests, I want to grab a sort of control value so that we have, uh, so that the, the values I grab later when the kit is actually plugged in have some context to them, make a little bit more sense. Let's thread this around here so I don't have to keep fighting with the wires. And we're going to set this to 2.4 volts because that's what I always test at. So in the overworld, I'm not actually in the exact same place I usually am, but I can fix that. And we'll 
just save here so I don't have to keep doing that. So at 2.4 volts, this Game Boy is pulling uh, 115 to 122 milliamps, which is a little high, but still within the, the ballpark of, um, of what we'd expect for something like this. Uh, most other Game Boys seem to be in the, like, 80 to 90 milliamp range, I think it is. I don't know, don't quote me on that. That's the whole point of that spreadsheet, so I don't have to keep remembering this stuff. Plug that in. Pop that bail out. And it goes pins up. Just leave that on the table for now. <laughs> and let's try out the new kit. There it goes. So at the exact same voltage, with the exact same game, in the exact same place, uh, it is pulling at 2.4 volts, 287 I think, 286 to 293 milliamps. But this kit also has a touch sensor and multiple levels of brightness, so at the lowest level it's pulling 209 to 214 milliamps, and then we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 brightness levels? No, it's 15, I think. Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. And at max, it is pulling... 345 to 352 milliamps and then just double check yep then that rolls over and if we press and hold this I don't know that it does anything it didn't do anything on my pre-production kit oh but it does appear to do something here I think we'll have to get this together before I can really investigate more Oh, it's just moving down in brightness, it's not... Press and hold uh, moves it back a step instead of forward a step. Okay. Easy enough. We can go ahead and continue the install. Go ahead and get that unplugged. And we'll set that aside for the time being. Same with this. I am using the power supply so I can get specific numbers out of this thing for testing. There's zero reason you can't just slip your, your uh, rear housing on and then pop batteries in there. But I have the power supply. I'm going to use the power supply. So despite the disgusting appearance of this thing, it's actually pretty clean. 
Um, realistically, I probably should come back here and clean up the uh, cart slot area because I did have to completely resolder that. I actually had the cart slot out of the thing entirely while I repaired one of the pins. But let's just quickly get some of the flux. I'm actually going to pause while I do this because this is this is because I repaired this GBA, not because it's typically needed. So hang on. All right, I actually ended up using the toothbrush because it was a little bit easier to get in there. Uh, but this is all ready for our new shell. Dropping stuff. And we'll just leave that attached there because I can just peel that off later. Uh, get the tweezers I dropped. And we also need the bracket. Come on. And we won't be able to test the OSD until I've got this thing soldered together. But we can test everything else first. Uh, that apart. So I suppose we should do the wiring first and foremost. I just went ahead and dropped the light pipe in because otherwise I'm going to forget it. Let's do the OSD portion. So I'm going to grab that off there. Because we need to solder up to these three wires. Right, I'm going to get that plugged in first. And if all goes well, I think we can just leave it here. But we definitely want to do the soldering before attaching the screen, because if we solder on back of the screen, we have a very high likelihood of ruining the screen. So let's not do that.
And I suppose we can do a little bit of uh, cable management just to make this a little bit neater. I'm going to go ahead and run the select wire under the legs of the CPU because, I don't know, why not? There's space seems to work. Shouldn't cause any interference. It's pretty low frequency stuff. Uh, and then I'll run the R button in the exact same way. Is that long enough now, though? I don't know if it is. I mean, it will be because this is folded down, but it's kind of tight. Yeah, that just seems more dangerous than uh, it needs to be. I'll just not route that. I'm sure it'll be fine. And this one is significantly longer than it needs to be. I'll trim that. I'll just make it a little bit cleaner. Too small. Yep. You'd think I'd have learned my lesson last time. There we go. My iron temp is a little bit high. It's burning through flux real fast. Let's turn it down. Not that I need it anymore, but... Alright. Carry on. I need buttons. I'm going to use these ones because it's one of the last few full sets of buttons that I have. Select membrane and B and D pad. Oh, 
always forget about this part. We need to remove this little piece of plastic here. Uh, don't need to cut it out or anything. I guess it's just to help with the injection molding process. darn cat hairs. I think I get it. Okay, I'm not gonna bother with the touch sensor because that seems like effort and if we've already wired this, oh no. Never mind, I better do it. Never mind, disregard me. It's kind of a pain in the butt though because we have to like feed that through. Fold that back just so it's not in the way. Slip that through. And then, what do I do with my phone? Here it is. I want you to cut off a little bit for the bottom here. Seems like a weird way to do that, but sure. Let's slip that in. Then we can drop that in. And then we can put the bracket in. That's annoying. I have the bracket upside down. Uh, I was wondering why it didn't line up. fits a lot better, doesn't it? Slip that in, we have our light pipe. Fold this over. Something's not seating properly. Oh, it's because I have it pressed down and all the buttons are sticking out. Uh, oh, I forgot to start select membrane. Heh. Good thing I checked, I guess. Right, that side seated, that side seated. Let's screw this down.
right, and because we're threading into plastic, I did a, uh, I fully tightened it and then I backed off a quarter turn because I don't want the stuff, uh, I don't want the screws to crack, uh, the screw posts. Uh, I'm gonna tuck this ribbon in here, otherwise it's going to stick out every single time I try assembling this. Realistically, I could probably cut that one off, but I'm gonna not do that. Because it folds out of the way, and if I ever change what GBA uh, is installed, then it'll be nice to have that other ribbon. basically there. Let me finish tightening these up. Then there's one more screw for the battery compartment and then we're good to go. launched a screw at me so I'm hoping I'm not gonna complain about this um, because funny playing did send the shell to me but I am gonna point it out because uh, in case this wasn't um, you know my, my thought process is maybe hey they just grabbed the first one off the line to send me because they made some changes or whatever um, and that's fine. I can, I can judge the shell objectively without, um, w without complaint, you know, finding real issue with the manufacturing process. Uh, what I mean specifically is out of the bag, my shell did come discolored. I noticed there was this, uh, like red in the shell on the battery cover. And at first I didn't care because I have one of these from Funny Playing and I was just gonna throw a rechargeable battery mod in this thing. But I did just notice all of the red right here and here too and I don't I don't know what this is. I don't know if this comes off. Uh, normally I don't like using IPA on a shell but just for curiosity's sake I'll rub it on the battery compartment. And so, like, my thought process is, oh, okay, that's not at all what I thought it was. It's just ink. My thought process was maybe they shot some red before they shot some, shot this white, but it was just dirty, I guess. It's clean now. All right, anyway. Oh, it was on. Aha. At least it works. Clean that up. Alright, so the touch sensor is right about the middle there. Seems to work pretty much as expected. And then if we do a press and hold, it 
just steps down the brightness. That's all I was seeing. And it does circle back up, uh, but we can also do the OSD here, change our brightness this way. We can change the color palettes, which we'll explore a little bit more in a bit. Uh, DSP, I believe that's the uh, pixel grid nonsense, and then frame FRM uh, should be frame blending, so we'll take a look at that too. Um, let's get that gone, and well, screw it, it works, so let's, let's throw on this finishing touch right now before I forget. You know, before I end up having to make 30 addendums to this video, it's like, hey, I'll catch you all next time. Oh, just kidding. I got one more thing for you. I misaligned it. Let's try it again. In my defense, the sticker cutout is not <laughs> it's not identical between both both portions. Uh, the battery latch cutout is a little bit wider on the sticker itself, so I was centering it based off the bottom line here, and that doesn't work. <laughs> anyway, I'm pretty pleased with that. I don't know. I think I might actually swap back to um, normal buttons, though. Just the regular gray ones. Uh, these bad boys. I don't know, just feels right. But whatever, I'll do that after the video. Let's check this thing out. Ah, oh, I was worried about that. I should also get something to sit this on so I can bring it closer to the camera and not have to shake around. Unfortunately, with my new camera setup, I can't really raise and lower it. Uh, test console. Let's do 240p. So did I already enable... I did enable the frame buffer, okay. doesn't seem to do much, if anything. Maybe you gotta save and close out? I don't know, I'm a little disappointed though. still on. It turned off. Yeah, I don't know. Doesn't seem to be doing much. Uh, so, for context, I suppose I should explain. This specific test right here, um, well, let me go back even further. Uh, Game Boys didn't really have a way of doing transparency, uh, so how devs worked around that was they would flicker a sprite on and off, you know, as fast as they could, repeatedly, and uh, because of the horrifying pixel response of the original Game Boy screens, that would result in a nice transparency effect. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, the newer screens, uh, like these IPS screens, have a significantly better pixel response time, which means 
any effect that used that flickering to get transparency is going to just show up as actual flickering. Uh, now, unfortunately, that also means, in some cases, uh, it's going to leave some, um, like, flickering artifacts. So what I mean by that is... Uh, if you leave an object on these particular screens, if you leave an object in one place too long and let it flicker, you might see remnants of that object. So if you look at the square as it is right now, oh, excuse me, you might be able to see the outline of the witch that the icon changes to when I hit select. I can certainly see it in person. Hopefully the camera's picking it up, uh, but it's there. The image retention... It's, yeah, it's there. Uh, so if we turn the frame buffer on, try that again, you know, I still see quite a bit of flickering. Uh, I still see flickering artifacts. I don't know, I don't know what that setting is doing, but It apparently doesn't do what I thought it did. Um, before even moving on to the other tests, I'm going to grab my other cart here for Zass. This is like um, absolute worst case scenario as far as flickering goes. This game is nigh on unplayable with most modern backlight kits, and this ain't good. Um, it is very flickery. I'm going to pause that, we're going to go into the OSD again, I'm going to flip that off, and undo it, and I, I see, I see no change. I don't know what this setting is supposed to be doing, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm actually going to pause here and look this up and double check because if I'm sitting here whining about a feature that doesn't work when I really just don't know what it's supposed to do, then, um, well, that's on me. So let me, let me do some fact checking. I'll be right back. Yeah, I went off to, uh, go look up Funny Playing's documentation and yeah, good luck. Um, it just says FRM and then in parentheses frames on or off. Uh, I don't know what it's supposed to be doing. I can see now that my Game Boy has stopped flickering, uh, but I don't know if that's just because there's uh, it's been flickering so long that it's just you know all I'm seeing now are, are artifacts and not actual flickering. So I'm gonna unpause it and see what happens. Uh, actually, before I do that, let me check and see what. Oh yeah, there we go. I thought it was select and start. Oh no, it's start. Okay, so as soon as I do that, it's gonna unpause. And yeah, the flickering's back. And it's even worse because I can see shadows of that scene that I already had. <sighs> Come on, how do I bring it up? Oh, it was select. I just wasn't hitting it right. Yeah, so I have the frame buffer on, or whatever it's supposed to be. It doesn't seem to be doing anything, so... I don't know. Maybe all it does is introduce a little bit of lag. Uh, I don't know. Ho hopefully Funny Playing can get their bugs worked out. Um, what this is supposed to be... Let me actually go off on a tangent. Um... I put my Zass game in my analog pocket here. Clean off my fingerprints. Sleep, what the heck? Don't sleep. Okay, there it goes. So I'm going to set that to that screen mode, and we're going to start the game. This is the normal screen mode. You see I've got nothing but flickering. Uh, at least that's what I see in person. Uh, hopefully it's coming out on the camera all right. Uh, but this is what it looks like, what the game looks like when you try and reproduce it on a um, modern screen that doesn't have any workarounds. 
in place. But if we go into the analog pocket, go into the settings for video, we can turn on frame blending. And then notice my flickering is almost entirely gone. And I unpause the game and the flickering is entirely gone. Uh, so I guess what analog is doing is they're analyzing frames and um, like blending the data. I don't know, maybe I don't understand fully the algorithm behind it. I thought I did, but it was made clear to me that I don't. Um, so I don't actually know how this works. All I know is it gets rid of the flicker entirely, uh, but still allows objects to be transparent on the screen. So if we kill this, I'm going to pop the flashcard in here and hopefully it works. Wait, I have another dedicated cart for this. Pop that in there. And it should boot into... Yeah, 160p. And so if we go into the shadow sprite test again, you see I've got that flickering, uh, but that's because this is considered a GBA, and so the settings are different, as opposed to that GBC game. So if I go into settings again, systems, GBA, video, turn on frame blending, my flickering is entirely gone, but I've still got transparency. So I think this is what Funny Playing was setting out to do, and unfortunately, it doesn't do that. It does something, but it doesn't do this. So I don't know, I don't know. Uh, that's my speculation at the very least. You see that, because apparently this Game Boy needs carts reseeded frequently. Probably gonna have to tear it apart again. Uh, let's pull up the 240p test suite again. And now let's inspect the full screen stripes. So I tried showing this in my stream, but it probably didn't come out too well because YouTube severely limits the uh, uh, resolution and um, data rate. So probably didn't come out at all, but here is the vertical line test or horizontal line test, excuse me. What this is supposed to be doing is it's supposed to display an entire row of white pixels, then an entire row of black pixels, then an entire row of white pixels, so on until the whole screen is filled. And you can see with the horizontal test, everything is nice and sharp, everything looks good. But as soon as we go to the vertical test, you can see some of the lines are a little bit bigger than others, and that's not how that's supposed to work. So if we do, if we bring up the, uh, OSD, we can change the display setting to option number two. Personally, I think that looks even worse. And option number three, which looks to be a blend of the first two, but with the um, quote unquote pixel grid emulation. Uh, quite frankly, I don't think any of these are good options. Uh, they all kind of suck with this specific situation. Uh, so option one is the standard mode, which gives us um, as close to linear scaling as they can get with this resolution. Option number two is anti-aliasing mode. I have no idea specifically what that does, but it looks to blur the edges just a little bit. Um, so you get less sharp an image, less detail, but it might look a little bit better in games. Uh, in this specific test, I think it just serves to highlight the uneven scaling, but I don't know, maybe in-game it'll look a little bit better. And then option number three is what they call pixel mode, which I'm guessing is the first display option, but with the pixel grid. Uh, now let's go over to... Let's do the color bar... No, that one. And then I'm going to pull up the uh, color palettes and we can flip through that and take a look. So the first option is standard. Uh, that is, I guess, no translation on the colors. 
So what you see is what you get. So, oh. Second option is what they call highlight, which I am hoping means they... Uh... Oh, interesting. That's clearly not what that is. Highlight looks to be a little bit more saturated as opposed to a little bit less saturated. So we'll have to compare that with uh, another Game Boy. Option number three is supposed to be classic green, according to the website, but it is, uh, it's definitely black and white for me. And then option number four is supposed to be classic gray, but it's clearly that classic green option. So I don't really know what's going on here. I'm going to have to talk to Funny Playing about this. Uh, maybe they sent me another beta kit, and uh, I was actually supposed to do the install on uh, this one or something. I don't know. They looked the same to me, so I just picked one. But uh, Who knows? Okay, uh, what else do we have to test? I think that's pretty much it. Um, I tested the actual like behavior of the kit in game uh, in my stream. I didn't notice any weird like um, stuttering, frame drops, screen tearing, anything like that. So I guess let's just repeat that, make sure nothing has changed between the firmware versions. I'm just gonna pull up Pokemon here. That is not the right save. Oh, wait, I could just use my actual game. That makes things a lot easier. Or not. So I tore this Game Boy apart before the video because it was having problems reading cards. I thought I found and fixed the problem, but clearly <laughs> it needs a little bit more work. Uh, one of the problems was that one of the pins was just severely misshapen and not making contact at all. It's doing that now, but clearly it's not consistent. Um, running around, you know, I still don't see any weird issues. Uh, I can say that going up and down, everything looks nice and smooth as expected, but going left and right, things can get a little bit jittery. So specifically, if you look at that sign right off the path, as I go left and right, it's it's kind of flickering in and out a bit. So let's turn that frame buffer on and off. It seems to have made zero difference. So I'm going to change the display mode to the anti-aliasing. And all that did was now I see more flicker like on this pillar. I'm sorry, I think there was glare. But like, I'm only seeing the flicker on these two objects. I don't see the flicker on the ground and the flowers and anything else. And again, I'm only seeing it because I'm looking for it. I think it would be there pretty much no matter what. Um, but with this quote unquote anti-aliasing mode on, I don't know, I, I'm seeing something almost looks like some, some chroma aberration, which is super weird. Never expected to see anything like that on the Game Boy. I don't think it's actually that, but it almost looks like that. Uh, what I'm looking at specifically is the little bits of green grass between these bricks. Um, it, 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 it looks weird to me. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it back to number one and like, it's still, it's still the same. Like I still see it, but now it's not standing out to me. Oops. And I'm gonna turn pixel grid on. And you know what? That flickering is almost entirely gone. So maybe that's the way to go. You know, just turn pixel grid on and forget about it. It looks pretty decent. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to hold this so I can see it, but I keep looking at the camera and then seeing that it's got a nice nasty glare across the screen. And I think I am normally not a fan of the pixel grid effects, um, but I think in this case, with this kit, the pixel grid is the way to go. Let's try... Ooh. 
keep doing that. Let's do, nope, I want color. We're gonna swap that. So now everything looks much brighter and much, uh, much different. Um, yeah, I don't know if I necessarily prefer this. I think I liked it the other way. Things are a little bit more muted. What's in your face? Let me find uh, what specific game is usually broken by the color effects. Uh, so we can pull that up. I will be right back. All right, if I recall correctly, it was Golden Sun. Uh, so here is what we have. Oop. Set that up to the max brightness. And this is on the normal color mode. And you can see this is supposed to be a rainy scene. It's not very rainy. If we switch it to a different color mode, it doesn't, doesn't really help. It makes it brighter. So, uh, I don't know. For context, let me go ahead and pop this game into another Game Boy. Um, I don't know that I even have one that I can show off. Because I think the AGS 101 is going to have the exact same problem. There's your uh, overworld. I mm, I think they both kind of suck, to be honest. I don't know what this is specifically supposed to look like, though. Uh, the problem, the problem in this specific case is that the original Game Boy Advance screens really, really sucked. They were really dark. They didn't. Uh, they were reflective. There was no backlight in them, um, and so some manufacturers, some some game publishers, uh, realized the problem with that. And when they were designing their games, they intentionally, um, you know, exaggerated the colors a little bit so that when they were displayed on the really muted GBA screen, it would show up a little bit better. But unfortunately, oh wow, that's dark. Um, Unfortunately, when you get a screen like this that is faithfully transmitting the colors um, and everything's still exaggerated, it kind of looks like garbage. Uh, so for context, this is the ITA kit. And sorry, I'm going to I'm going to have a brief look at it because the viewing angles on these things suck. Uh, viewing angles on the IPS kits are significantly better. Uh, but that doesn't look better to me either. That it's kind of that kind of sucks. I mean, when you consider that this is supposed to be like a rainy, gloomy scene, it's really bright and off-putting. Uh, but again, this is just one specific game, you know, worst case scenario. I know Donkey Kong Country is another bad one. Uh, let me see if I can scrounge up a, a GBA with an original screen. Here, I split the difference. I went and grabbed one of my uh, GBA SPs that I haven't yet modified. Um, here, oh, let's go back at the... Can I go back to the title scene? Eh, whatever. So here's the overworld. It is quite a bit gloomier. Uh, not exactly, you know, hey, it's a spring day, blah, blah, blah. And that is, it doesn't matter if the light's on or off. It's off right now. I can turn it on. Um, with how my lighting is set up, that's pretty much just how it's going to look. 
if I kill all of my lighting and then turn the Game Boy Advance light on, it'd be a little bit easier to make out, but that's gonna that's not properly conveying the color, I think, because that looks very blue on my screen. It's much less blue in person. Uh, but, I don't know. It's only a handful of games that this is an actual problem in. And even then, I don't think it's a problem. I think it's just, you know... I, I don't think it's helpful to the art style, I will say that. But there is normal GBA SP, which is going to be pretty representative of a normal GBA as well, um, just with a light. And then we'll walk through this thing one more time. just green, green mess. Oh, man. That's unfortunate. I will say, I don't hate what they're doing with this kit. I think they're headed in the right direction. But I don't think they're, I don't think they're there yet. I think, I think they should have left this in the oven a little bit longer. Good lord, what, who would put their front door right in front of a cliff like that? Yeah, just walk out of your house and fall off the freaking... Anyway. Uh, <laughs> who Who is responsible for this city planning here? This is ridiculous. Ah, uh, I don't know. I'm... Rambling. Let's let's finish up with some of the original Game Boy tests. Wherever I have my freaking flash cart, I put it in something. It's in my DMG. Where's my DMG? There it is. Okay. I don't expect to find any issues, but just cover our cover our bases, you know. Uh, what do we want? We want GB test ROMs, Matt Curie, scrolling with the reset. And then, so what we're checking here is we just want to make sure that it's nice and smooth as everything moves across the screen here. When that S in the word scrolling hits the left hand side of the screen, it is issuing an LCD reset command, uh, which older backlight kits handled extremely poorly, but it hasn't really been a problem in years. And there's certainly no problem here. I don't see any dropped frames. I don't see any screen tearing. Looks good to me. Gradient flicker test, what's that? Ah. I don't remember what this specific test is to be used for, so... I'm gonna refrain from speculation, but it is flickering. So, there's that. And then I guess let's just try out Pokemon Silver real quick. Make sure I don't notice anything I didn't notice before. And this way we get to try out the uh, awful GBA native scaling. That. Which, you know what? I wonder if we turn on... anti-aliasing yeah <laughs> that actually doesn't look that bad I mean everything's horrifyingly out of perspective because of how the game was designed but in terms of um, 
like how the actual uh, uh, palettes, not palettes, sprites are being presented on screen and tiles. Like it looks totally fine with that horrifying GBA scaling. I wonder if that's what this setting is intended for. Um, but outside widescreen, I think it kind of sucks. So we'll turn that back on. I think that's, I think that's the best balance. And then we just play in the normal aspect ratio like a sane human being. Again, things are kind of bright and green. Oh wow, wild lady! Can you even get one of these at level seven? Throw a pokeball at it. Uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a good kit. Don't get me wrong. Um, don't misunderstand. I like it. I'm very pleased with it. I just think it could be better. Um, unfortunately, it's not what I thought. And I, I, I think, like I said, it needs to be popped into the oven for another few hours. Um, oh, let's... I need a test pattern. Let's do one more thing, hang on. Let's check the ripple, because now I have a uh, actual retail kit. Uh, flicker adjuster, is it? Oh, see, that's not flickering. That's not supposed to flicker, and it's not flickering, so that's nice. I notice it only ever flickers when the um, OEM screen is out of calibration, or ITA, apparently, ITA does it too. Okay, so I don't know what I was hoping for, but these all aren't really that great. Uh, if I press down on the lens, of course, there's some ripple. Uh, but if I'm pressing down on the casing, like, unreasonably hard right now, um, that's this is the only place where my right thumb is that I can get it to ripple and there's no reason to press down on the speaker grill normally, so I don't think it's going to be a problem. Ugh. Keep hitting that freaking touch sensor, man. Yeah, hitting buttons hard, not a single problem. Just wish I knew what that uh, frame is supposed to do. Um, I will. I'll talk to Funny Playing, and I'll probably throw an addendum in a comment or in the description of the video. Um, we can discuss exactly what that frame thing is supposed to be doing. And if I just totally miss the beat on that, I'll film another video, and we'll go from there. Uh, but otherwise, that's about all I have for this thing. Um, again, don't misunderstand. This is a pretty pretty darn good kit. Uh, I just, it's not what I wanted. I was hoping the kit that I've been trying to get for the last few years, I was hoping this was that. This is not that, unfortunately. Uh, so we'll, we'll go back to planning. Um, I'll discuss with uh, Funny Playing some of the things that I think could use improvement. Um, but otherwise, you know, hit me up in the comments, let me know if there's something you think I should suggest that I'm not already going to suggest. Um, so for instance, I want to bring up uh, color LUTs, lookup tables, um, because I think, I think they're finally getting what I'm asking, but they didn't quite do what I wanted. Um, so I'll, I'll try and bring up some specific examples with that, and the frame blending especially. Uh, I don't, I don't know how analog does it. Um, I sincerely doubt they'll give me their algorithm, even if I ask nicely. So I'm not even gonna bother. Uh, um, otherwise, I'll I'll leave it to the experts to figure out. But anything else, you know, hit me up. I'm all ears. Um, in comparison to the other. IPS kit that Funny Playing also makes, uh, the one that they 
have not yet made laminated. Uh, I thought I had one on my desk. Eh, whatever. You know what I mean, the 9380 kits. Um, I still like the 9380 kit more than this, but if they port these features to the 9380 kit and then laminate it, I, I think there's almost no room for this kit on the market. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a pricing thing. I know for a while Funny Playing was uh, mentioning the 9380 kit, uh, LCDs were getting hard to come by, so maybe that's where this came from. And now that they started making their own 9380 LCDs, I, I don't know what, what future this kit has. Um, Maybe if they improve the the features, the new features, then uh, I don't know. Maybe that'll make it a little bit more appealing. But for now, I don't know. It's a toss up. Like there's there's trade offs with every kit, so I guess it all depends on what you want. I personally don't have a problem with it. The power usage is nice. The brightness is especially nice. The scaling I thought would be heinous, but really I don't have a problem with. Uh, pixel grid, normally I don't like, but on this specific kit, I think it actually improves the look a little bit better. Uh, I think it improves the look a little bit, but I don't know if it's improving the look per se, or just not damaging it as much as that uneven scaling. Um, but it, it, it's difficult, you know, when you put this kit side by side some of the other kits, it's easy to find problems. But in a vacuum, this kit by itself, absolutely fantastic. I don't think you can go wrong. Um, so yeah, I will throw some links down in the description where you can find some of the stuff. Uh, so the kit, the shell, and the bracket uh, are all going to be from Funny Playing. Uh, I will throw some links to Retro Game Repair Shop down in the description if you want to take a you want to grab them from that shop uh, shipping is going to be quite a bit quicker than from funny playing because well shipping is going to be quite a bit quicker if you're in the US than from funny playing because retro game repair shop is based out of the US funny playing is not um, otherwise yeah thanks for watching uh, check out the links in the description uh, I do maintain a wiki for all of this sort of stuff so every single backlight kit that I've got my dirty dick beaters on I have done a quick write up and links to the videos um, and then there's a summary up at the top of each section where it's like hey this is the kit that I think you know if you're looking at this with choice paralysis get this one and you'll be happy with it you know that sort of thing um, otherwise I'll go ahead and get that updated for this kit within the next few days and uh, we'll go from there and uh, otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all next time. Hi there, Future Mako here. Um, I got an addendum because I watched that uh, video when I premiered it live, and uh, I realized I looked like a crazy person because I messed up the recording. Uh, so, real quick, I want to explain that all of the flickering that I was trying to show off wasn't coming through on my phone because... Turns out my new phone doesn't actually film at 60 FPS like it says it does. Um, my old phone is fantastic. It's never failed me. I should have just never replaced it. In fact, I'm filming from it now and I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut these videos together. Uh, but I want to show you what this flickering is supposed to look like as long as you're watching this video in 60 FPS. You should see that flickering. Um, I think you have to switch it manually to uh, 1080p or above to get 60 FPS. Otherwise, it defaults to 30, and it isn't going to look right. Um, I, I hate how not transparent smartphone specs are these days. It's kind of ridiculous. I, I, I lucked into getting this Samsung Galaxy S10e because it's basically perfect for how I use it. And I have yet to find another phone that works as well for this purpose. And it's kind of ridiculous because the battery is not great. <laughs> uh, but I guess that's more in line with my uses. Uh, anyway, that's Zass. Uh, the problem is that in order to make these 
background elements transparent. There's two layers that are flickering on and off at uh, 60 hertz there. Uh, and the result on OEM Game Boy screens is a nice, you know, transparency effect because the pixel response is just total garbage on those. Uh, here, the pixel response is quite a bit better, and maybe if I shake it around, it's a little bit more evident. At least it is in person. Um, but the pixel response is quite a bit better on these newer screens, so you actually see that flickering effect, and if I turn the FRM feature on, which is supposed to fix this, it doesn't seem to do that. Uh, so let me go ahead and grab the test ROMs um, and let's, let's take a look at that. I'm gonna pop in, that's not my flash cart. I mean, it is my flash cart, but it's not the EverDrive. Awakening. Do the same test I usually do, and then we'll go ahead and do a 240p test suite. So what we're going to look at is uh, this guy's chain right here. As you can see, it's it's flickering quite a bit. It's not supposed to look like that. Um, it's better than it usually is. A lot of kits show usually show worse flickering than this. Uh, let's try... Oop. And even if I turn the frame feature off, it looks basically identical to me. Um, so I really don't know what, if anything, that's doing. I've talked to Funny Playing about it, and... They're working on it, but realistically, they never should have shipped the kit and advertised that feature. But also, in their defense, they never actually said what that feature was supposed to do. So, uh, they let people make assumptions. I am one of those people who made assumptions, and for that, I apologize. Wait until I get one of these things in my hand, hands next time. Uh, what were we looking for? 240p? Oh, good. It's still on the list. And we're going to look at the shadow sprite test. Same thing as usual. You can see the flickering. Let's do... Frame on. It is unchanged. Ta-da. Anyway, I hope that kind of explains what um, what the heck I was rambling about for darn near 20 minutes in that video. Uh, in fact, let's do one more test. I'll throw his ass back in the analog pocket here. We'll take a look at that. And apologies for quite literally uploading the same video pretty much twice. And by pretty much twice, I mean twice. Anyway, there is almost no flickering. Wow, look at that. How do they do it, you might ask? Do they just have slow pixel response? No, well, no, I kind of already went over it in this video, didn't I? Let's pause that. Settings, systems, GB, video. We'll go ahead and turn frame blending off, and then look at how much that's flickering. Hopefully that comes out this time. This is what I think Funny Playing was setting out to imitate, and they didn't do a very good job of it. Um, obviously, this game looks really terrible with the frame blending off and looks basically perfect with the frame blending on. Um, in fact, in most cases, it's probably fine to just leave the frame blending on. Uh, in theory, it's going to add like an extra frame of lag, but 
it's entirely likely that the analog pocket is inherent has inherently less lag than a modded Game Boy anyway, especially since uh, the Game Boy has to go through an FPGA to convert the uh, display output to the modified screen anyway. So one less uh, step in the chain. But I don't know. I've never tested it. I'd like to someday, but I just haven't yet. Um, I hope this isn't just crazy rambling, and I hope this helps add some context to an otherwise lovely video. And uh, because someone's going to ask, yeah, this, this is the new phone. You'd think, you know, with the price of these gosh darn things, that the cameras would have improved in the last few years. No. I think S10e was the sweet spot. Um, You'll never guess what I just threw. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's all I've got. Um, I hope this makes sense. I hope this makes up for the other video that I... I'm, I'm not going to delete it or anything, but I am going to de delist it because, unfortunately, it just it does not do what I want it to do. And it's my phone that dropped the frames, not YouTube and not the VFR to CFR conversion. So it is what it is. And um, hopefully Samsung can work on their garbage and not put out such nonsense. Catch you all next time.